Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, traders. Steve here at Logic FX Trading, and welcome to our trading room summary on the 1st of May 2020. Happy May Day for those of you who celebrate May Day. Um, so, Europe and uh, UK, basically, the London session is going to be very quiet today, guys, because they're essentially closed. Um, and New York have a different. Uh, Labor Celebration Day, which is Labor Day, which is September, so they will be working today. So we might not see much happening today until the New York session, but it is a Friday as well, guys. So not expecting any fireworks today. Um, yesterday we were looking for a drawdown uh, after the week of continued push up. China got the the biggest drawdown. What we've got to see now is this now the start of some sort of bear market to test the previous lows before we start to come off um or is it just what it is a drawdown and then markets continue on up i'll be looking to see if we get a little setup on the start start of a break and from there maybe you look to trade it down folks and um, we're not out of the woods yet so far as coronavirus is concerned and the damage that's been done to um uh, businesses what we said yesterday with the Nikkei yet again if we got something that looked like a, a bit of a um a zigzag down then we could perhaps look to see is it going to go long that looks a little bit too impulsive for me to be a zigzag therefore it's not complete now guys as you can see this one also looked pretty steep and we looked for a, a pullback to maybe see if we can get a further drop down. Didn't happen. So there's no guarantee. Excuse me, folks. There's no guarantee that this is going to give us a little set, set up and then off it goes. Excuse me, I just uh, had a drink of coffee there and it's come back on me. Um, but I would like to see a bit more downside to these guys. I just think that they've all gone up too fast, too quick. Um, considering the damage that's been done to the world economy, considering the world economy is currently in recession, um, I think these are too optimistic. They may even be a dead cat bounce, guys. I'm not, I'm not saying that's what they are, but if these drop any further from here, then I'd certainly be looking to trade them down. The Aussie, um, let's just zoom it back out a little bit looks a little bit over exaggerated there guys but still you can see that's what we were looking for there's the alarm line we've got a half decent drawdown uh does it continue on down maybe to there <coughs> maybe it gives us a setup so at the moment i wouldn't be doing anything with it guys that's what i'm saying let's see if we get a uh, sorry that's not a very nice drawing there folks let's see if we get a little bearish flag in there and then maybe we get some more downside um that's not guaranteed i mean if you look at these they're they're, they're quite difficult to to determine what what you've got in there they're very um what's the word it's jumping around a lot guys but um if you got something like that then maybe into monday tuesday wednesday next week we maybe see a further push down in this uh german little bit of a pullback on the germans close today so there's it up there holiday so we'll have to see what happens on monday when they reopen uh french as well bit of a pullback the only thing i would say about these is that um we were looking for this to, to pull back there's the arrow i thought it might go a little bit higher maybe for one more day before drawing down but anyway it started what i would say with these is that the ECB yesterday um, continued their stimulation of the economy, which should see, um, you know, money flowing into the stock markets. But the underlying trend, or not the underlying trend, that's wrong, guys. The, <clears throat> the underlying fundamentals say that these are all, particularly in the American market, they're all overvalued, guys. Um, so they do need a correction so I would not be surprised to see these dropping further now obviously it's up to yourselves whether you decide <coughs> excuse me whether you decide to try and trade them down or whether you just put an alarm line on and wait for the drawdown to finish 
and then when you get a break off it look to start training it long you got to decide which of the two you're going to do uh, usually if you try and chase price you're going to get caught out in the wrong direction but uh, so either wait for it to drop and when it's finished and it starts coming long then trade it long or you know you could try and trade it down the problem with trying to trade it down is if it doesn't turn out to be a drawdown and it goes like that then you're going to um, be caught out on it um, this is the UK guys remember the one thing with the UK is not only are they dealing with um, with uh, coronavirus but Brexit negotiations still have to be completed by the end of the year and of course we've had a couple of months off so until some progress is seen in the Brexit negotiations the new deal as it were um, you're going to see problems in the UK stock market it's already come up <clears throat> in what is possibly a V-shape I don't think it uh, warrants a V-shape and therefore I wouldn't be surprised if we saw a bit more downside to it even the test of the previous low uh, if not that, then certainly a drawdown and maybe the hang around here for a while until we get out of uh, out of the pandemic, starting to get back to normal and the Brexit negotiations done before I see any real upside to the UK market. Um, yet again, NASDAQ yesterday, we were calling for a drawdown. Uh, we had a five wave move up. And within the fifth wave with a one, two, three, four, five. And within that fifth wave with a one, two, three, four, five. We discussed that yesterday. And the, the, the only thing I did say about it yesterday, we were here yesterday. And I said, listen, it is possible that that little fifth wave isn't long enough. But I certainly wouldn't be trying to trade it any further long. If it goes long, we'll then see a drop on. As it turned out, there you go, guys. It just started to drop. And down it's come. What we need, this particular wave is probably finished now. So what we need to do next is see, do we get a bit of a pullback on it today? Or is it, is it an impulsive move today? If it's impulsive, then I would look for a setup to try and trade it long. If it isn't impulsive... And it hangs around down here today. Then going into Monday, I'd look for a further drop. S and P not open at the moment. Same thing. We had the drawdown. Is this the start of a little bear flag? That's what I'll be keeping an eye on. Same with the Dow Jones. You can see where I've put my alarm in there this morning. This is what we drew yesterday, and that's what I put in there this morning. Same thing. This was the fourth wave. One, two, three, four, five. We said it may get a little bit more of a push up before dropping, but nonetheless, I was already short in it, guys. So um, I got short in it here because I thought we were going to get a zigzag here. So I'm still in the red with it. I'm hoping that we get a drawdown to either get back to zero or maybe uh, make a bit of money. Is this possible? Well, it is possible, guys. Is it going to happen or not? It's the thing. Maybe it just comes down to here and then turns and starts to go long again just depends on how uh, hmm. depends on 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 earnings the news that comes out about company earnings and whether people get frightened by it or not guys this to me has happened because of the money supply not because of the valuations and i think they're way overvalued so i do think they will drop further guys um okay that's that then let's have a quick look at the dollar we had a pullback on the dollar yesterday that was mainly due to um the euro and to be quite honest i i expected it to go in the opposite direction um because the euro zone is like everywhere else their um interest rates on zero and they uh, continued their uh, quantitative easing in various sky guises guys but basically they're printing money so you would have thought that would have diluted the euro a little bit of optimism bang down it's come started to come back and now it's pushing down again and testing this again will it continue down i don't know to be quite honest guys what i'd like to see would be a break out of that and test it uh, sorry trade it back up into there so that we have this idea that i've had 
which was while we're in this, the safe haven aspect of the dollar will keep it up there. And once we get out of it, then you start to see the move coming down. Is this the move down? I, I think it's quite significant that it stopped there, guys. I think that's quite significant. But we'll just have to see. Obviously, today, with the European markets being closed, um, maybe you'll not see much of a move here. But if, if on Monday it pushes on down, then next level we'll have to look at that. If it pushes through there, then I'll be looking for a pullback to get short on it, guys. But at the moment, it would just leave it alone. Oil. Um, oil's rebounded again, as we said it would. If you remember right back here, I drew something. Um, went to zero, and then the next day, the futures for the next month opened up there. And I drew something that looked like that, guys. I said this will bounce along for a while until the surplus is used up and we start to get back to normal then you'll start to see the oil price rising and um, i suspect so because of that i suspect we'll probably drop off a little bit from here i don't know if it'll come right back down to there or not but i think once you look back at this whether that's the top or whether that's the top there will be a sideways movement on this um, and then eventually we'll get a break out of it guys and then, of course, that then affects all of the oil currencies, the likes of the CAD, the likes of the Norwegian uh, Corona, the likes of the Ruble. And um, I did say, let's just have a quick look at the Ruble, guys. So despite the fact that DXY went short yesterday, the Ruble, dollar Ruble went long, as I predicted. Remember we were in here and I started drawing these, you can see two, three days in a row. Sometimes I don't clean these up, guys. Two or three days in a row, I drew that, then I drew that. I said, maybe it breaks that bottom, but it will go long. Well, there you go. That was despite the fact that DXY went short yesterday, folks. So there's problems in the um, the Russian economy. What I would do is look for a setup and then see if we get another breakout. At the moment, it's possibly still in this corrective structure, which means that it could come off here and push down some more before you get a breakout. But what I'd do is I'd look for a flag there, guys. And if it starts to break through there and that alarm line goes off, then maybe you look to trade the ruble up. Uh, South African Rand, just quickly while we're here, we said the same thing from here. We said we'd get a drawdown, maybe to there. And then we'd see it starting to come back up again. I honestly didn't expect that. I thought it would just gradually come up. But we had this massive boost. Same thing. I'd look for a, for a bullish flag. And then look to trade it through the top there. I'm looking for it to go through the top. Um, there's going to be massive problems in South Africa with coronavirus. The, the economy is already in uh, dire straits. And if any of the other African currencies after independence are, um, you know, um, to go by, then the South African rand could just go and go and go and go, guys. It's, it's been a long time, it's been 20 years, but um, you know, if you switch the engines off on a, this is, I can remember saying this 20 years ago, if you switch the engines off on an oil tanker, it still has momentum and it'll run for a good, you know, few miles before uh, its inertia would stop it. Um, and, and possibly the South African uh, economy is doing the same thing, guys. They came off a good base. They've had a good 20 years at it. In those 20 years, just going back, this is not political, guys. This is just the truth of the situation. And in those 20 years, I lived in South Africa back here in the 80s and 90s, way back here. And there was four dollars, four rand to the pound, and maybe five dollars to the pound. And then slowly but surely. So maybe you get a bit of a pullback, you get another one, you get another one, you get another one, guys. I can't see the South African economy recovery from this. Okay, okay that's way ahead of drawing there, guys, but it's just my underlying thoughts of the South African rand. Okay, guys, that'll do us for today. 15 minutes. These are supposed to be 10 minutes, by the way. 
Uh, have a great weekend. Have a good May Day if you're off. And I'll speak to you all again on Monday. Bye for now.